When looking back as a watch collector and just how my collection has evolved, if I have to look at, for lack of a better phrase, my first love in terms of watches, it was the dress watch. And to specifically look into it, it was German dress watches. The watches themselves drew me in as a result of their unique positioning of both being stylish and utilitarian, a balance that the Germans seem to be able to obtain better than pretty much anybody else. This draw towards these types of watches transitioned into dollars spent a few years ago after my purchase of the Nomos Orion. A watch after years of owning now, I went to revisit with another review, along with two other dress models within Nomos' catalog that to me represent the best value when it comes to dress watches for the price. Now, over the past few years, there's been a lot of watches that have come into my collection as well as left, but the Nomos Orion has kind of solidified itself as a long-term keeper. Whether I'm heading to a more formal event or simply trying to dress up an everyday look, the Orion has been a great partner during these type of instances. And even after three years after purchasing this watch, I feel just as strongly as I did the moment I purchased it that it was a fantastic dress piece for the money. But during that time of deciding on this watch, I considered many other watches from different brands until arriving at Nomos. But even with Nomos's catalog, I had a tough decision to make just there alone, as I looked at a few additional models from the brand, primarily with the Tangente and the Ludwig collections. And considering deciding between these pieces was such an internal point of contention for me in my buying process, I figured why not take a closer look at the Orion and two other models a bit more in depth. So I kind of have a soft spot for Nomos. I've mentioned them on the channel many times before, but I perfectly understand that there's going to be a lot of people in terms of their designs where it's not gonna sit the same way as other people. I think this is a very love or hate type of design style that Nomos brings. But that said, I have found that their entry level dress pieces, unlike other watches, are less likely to divide opinion. And it's probably a safe assumption that their entry level dress pieces were probably the leading catalyst to the brand expanding rapidly since their conception in 1990, now being the largest German watch manufacturer by volume. However, let's first look at a rundown of this Orion. So we're looking at a 35 millimeter case, case thickness of 8.3 millimeters, lug width of 18 millimeters, lug to lug of 44.8 millimeters, have a sapphire crystal here, water resistance of 30 meters, and is powered by the Nomos Alpha Manual Caliber. Yet across the board, when looking at all three of these pieces, they're all quite similar in terms of their specs and size. All of them follow a consistent size in their case of 35 millimeters, a lug to lug of around 45 millimeters, give or take, all while containing their alpha manual movement within. One point of differentiation is going to be the thickness, as when measuring with my calipers, the Ludwig and Tangente measure quite thinner than that of the Orion, as the slightly domed crystal of the Orion certainly assist in this regard. And it's probably also important to note for among these three lines that there's quite a bit of variations available in terms of size, leaving you with a tough decision that perplexed me at the time of my purchase, picking between the 35 millimeter and the 38 millimeter. As you'll find with seeing each of these watches on my six and a quarter inch wrist, 15.9 centimeters for my metric system friends, that each of them wear much bigger than the 35 millimeters might indicate, as one of the common characteristics of Nomos watches is their distinctive case shape, usually always slim, but having lugs that are quite pronounced, extending the lug to lug quite a bit than say typical watches of similar size. And considering that many of the people that will be probably gravitating towards these pieces are desiring a piece that might be very restrained in both size and garnering up attention, I think the 35 millimeter would probably be appropriate for anyone say seven inches and under and 38 millimeters for those with larger wrists. And although this is just a guide and won't apply to everybody in their situation, I think it will guide many people to the right decision. One aspect that will not change no matter what though, no matter what model you choose, is the incredible light weight that these watches have. I mean, we're, we're talking about weights that are 1.3 ounces, including the strap on these watches, making it one of the lightest mechanical watches that you'll have the opportunity to wear. Now, when it comes to Nomos, I think they're known primarily for, I would say they're more avant-garde designs or having a lot of Bajas influence. But among their eccentric watches that are a little bit more playful, I think for me, where I think Nomos is at their best is when they're going with the more traditional, classic looking styles of their dress watches. And despite each of these pieces sharing similar layouts given their matching calibers within, 
They offer different interpretations that allow each to stand out in their own way. First, let's just look at a basic watch within their catalog that I think of the three doesn't get mentioned as much in online watch circles, the Ludwig. Of the three, the Ludwig is probably the most old school in terms of its restrained classic looks. Looking at the galvanized white silver plated dial that looks true to its silver description, contrasting with the understated tempered blue steel hands at the center and casting over the groove subdial at the six. But to go back to the more classic look this watch gives off, most of this is gonna come from the printing of the Roman numerals at every even hour with the classic watchmaker's Roman numeral four, which I've always loved in providing a dial with the necessary balance, as well as featuring a railway minute track along the outside of this dial. Transitioning to the Orion, a watch that of the three seems to walk the middle ground of both appealing to the timeless looks with contemporary design in my opinion, the watch comes with a white silver plated dial that plays with the light much more than that of the Ludwig, transitioning to a more silver tone in harsher lighting conditions and almost resembling a true white when under softer light. Adding to the watch's exceptional looks in the light, the watch has the same temperature blue seal hands at the center of the dial and at the subdial. And unlike the printed dial of the Ludwig and yet to be mentioned Tangente, here we have applied polished gold indices that play with the light and only appear when you closely examine them feeding into the understated nature that this piece really brings while providing a bit more of a surprise within the details. And to close out the three here, we have the Tangente, which of the three, and even as an Orion owner, I think is the watch or the dress watch that comes to mind first when thinking of Nomos. However, to add a bit of flair to the design and not having three of the same watches, here we have a beautiful midnight blue dial. Similar to the Ludwig, the Tangente shows the even hour markings by printed hour numerals, with those not following the same Roman fashion, but a slim typography that is undoubtedly Nomos. The dial in Midnight Blue is quite mesmerizing, and this blue is one that I think is rarely actually seen occupying watch dials in general, and has become one of Nomos's calling cards as of late, similar to the Club Campus Neomatic that I reviewed last year. The dial accents and hands come in gold, but as an important note here, the 38 millimeter option with its Midnight Blue dial comes with rhodium plated and silver colored accents instead, but I think both provide a color profile that can be accommodating to both men and women that are drawn to the design. One final note here about the Tangente is the lugs differ quite substantially from that of the Orion and the Ludwig. One of the common points of criticism that I see from Nomos is the distance between the strap and the actual case, a point that has never really bothered me, but I've just been on YouTube long enough to know what people say in the comments. But this considered the Tangente has holes in his lugs that when factored together with the slanted lugs at a central pivot point, show really no gap between the case and the strap. Now, when it comes to Nomos's reputation, I think there's a lot of things I could consider, primarily the designs usually front and center here, but their movements being cost-effective, well-executed, and in many cases, vertically integrated, are some of the best that you can get on the market. And of the Nomos watches that I have owned, their movements have always been a joy to look at, even their more affordable calibers, like the one within these watches, the Alpha Manual Caliber. Across these three watches, you can actually see the movement within the Sapphire case backs, but I always say just go for the open case back because I think these are great watches to look at. These movements have really just become the horological example of business in the front, party in the back kind of saying for me, as I, I just recall frequently getting compliments about my Orion just for its clean dial aesthetics from those that may not know a lot about watches and just like the looks of it, to later wow them as I flip the watch over, showing them the open sapphire case back. And sure, when factoring in all the movements in the world of horology, this is a basic one at the core of it, but following the theme of these dials, just because something is simple does not make it any less well done. The movement is Nomos' take on the old school Passeau 7001, developed using their own in-house components and staff to construct. The movement has a well-executed machine finish with glass shooter ribbing across the three-quarter plate with polished edges, tempered blue screws, prolage finishing beneath the balance, and a finely executed spiral finish on the ratchet and crown wheel. The Alpha Manual movement operates at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz, has 17 joules, is hackable when pulling out the crown to the farthest position, and has a power reserve of 43 hours. As these movements are adjusted at six positions and are capable of chronometer level accuracy, as my Orion still three years later is only within few seconds of deviation a day.
Unfortunately, the dress watch nowadays is kind of a dying breed. And as the dress watch being essentially the gateway into the world of watches for me, it kind of makes me a little upset. And a dress watch might not be essentially necessary as depending on your lifestyle, it might not actually warrant getting one. But similar to how when you need a suit and you don't have one, it's the worst feeling in the world, the same thing kind of really happens with a dress watch. Maybe not to the same degree, but to some degree. And sure that there are many options out there in terms of affordable options, even below Nomus in terms of what's available. However, there are very few brands that know how to properly make a dress watch nowadays. And Nomos, to me, is one of them. And these three watches are great examples of that in action. And after owning this Orion for three years, looking at the other options available, owning several different models from Nomos as well, I feel just as confident today as I did you know, a couple years ago when I was making videos about Nomos watches and speaking very highly of them, that they're honestly, in terms of dress watches, the best that you can get for around $2,000, these three type of models. But just to slam this idea home and sum up my thoughts, in an interview by Revolution sitting down with some of the world's greatest watchmakers, including Roger Smith, Lauren Ferrier, and Philippe Dufour, they were asked, which watches would you recommend for under $10,000? Philippe Dufour simply stated, I would say that you could buy a watch at this price, maybe a bit less, a very good watch in terms of value and quality. It's not Swiss, sorry, but a German brand called Nomos. I find that this brand makes a very serious product. I like these watches, and for somebody who wants to start, I think this will be a good choice. Not too expensive and good value for money. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Also, I wanna hear your comments about Nomos in general, but also their dress pieces. And what are your thoughts on dress watches in general? Are, are you somebody that are just steel sports nowadays? I know so many people are just going more casual with their attire, myself included. But do you think that a dress watch belongs in your collection personally? Love to see your comments down below. Also guys, hit the link in the description to go to my website. I have a lot of different accessories and things there for watch enthusiasts. And it's a great way to help support the show. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.